If I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness, and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the... So I'd set about, however necessary, to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve. Do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves, until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, You'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who wanted until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching today. Today, we are going to be exposing Satan. Listen, that was Paul Harvey, If I Was the Devil, or If I Were the Devil. And uh, I believe he, he spoke that in 1965. Don't quote me on that. Do, go do your own research, okay? And, and, and listen, I, I don't agree with a lot of things that Paul Harvey said, uh, um, but that right there was very spot on and um, pretty prophetic, man, kind of prophetic and, and what is happening and still happening now. This is the Exposing Satan series and uh, uh, I don't know, my forehead was really shiny there, so I figured I'd wipe it off a little bit. I don't know. Um, I got a shiny forehead. What can I say? All right. So, but thank you guys for joining me. Thank you for, for tuning in, watching. Hey, before we get started, share this real quick, all right? Share it with somebody that, that God's put in, in your heart and your mind. Uh, um, you know, we always want to share this. Uh, if God puts it in our heart, just share it, all right? So do me a favor, hit the share button, hit the like button. Uh, um, let me know that you're on here. Uh, comment. Listen, uh, uh, if I don't answer your questions, if you, if you have questions, uh, uh, by the end of this video, or as you're going through the video, if I talk about something and you have a question about it, and um, I'm going to see if I'll answer them, but if I don't answer them today, just uh, uh, comment with a question, and maybe I can do a video, a follow-up video, explaining more, because there's a lot of things that I'm going to cover, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to cover everything, all right? I'm going to try it, but um, 
I don't know if I'm gonna be able to cover everything. So, but uh, so I don't know how how long, how many videos uh, we're gonna do of this series. And uh, right now it's up in the air, depending on how much detail and how much I can cram uh, everything, all this knowledge, because I do want you to understand it, but uh, I don't just want to cram a bunch of knowledge into you and you don't understand it. I want you to get the message. So if you have any questions, just put them in the comments, all right, as we go along. Um, before we get started, we're going to pray, all right? So uh, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, and we're, we're going to do some damage. Some spiritual warfare is about to, to happen, all right? And the, the biggest spiritual warfare, praying. Yes. So let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this beautiful day, Lord God. We thank you for today. We thank you for, for just waking us up this morning, Lord God. We know that today is worth a million dollars because you woke us up, Lord God. The, the, today is worth more than a million dollars because you woke us up, Lord God. So we thank you for this opportunity, Lord God. Let us make the best of it, Lord God. And, and, and Lord, let your light shine, Lord God, upon, upon your people, uh, uh, upon the world, Lord God. So open up your, our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our souls, Lord God, to be able to receive your word, your light, your truth, Lord God, that the truth will go forth, Lord God, and wake up some sleeping people in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, guys, uh, this is exciting. Um, so we're going to we're going to we're going to kick it off. All right. So who is Satan? All right. That is the first question. Who is Satan? All right. So we're going to get into who he is first. All right. He is the devil, also called Satan, was one of the greatest angel God created. All right. God and the Bible says that God created him beautiful. He was great. All right. He was powerful. And, and uh, uh, the Bible also describes him as a serpent. All right. Uh, the devil, Satan, has many descriptions of what he looks like, how he is. Right. So the Bible describes him as a serpent, as a dragon. As the father of lies, he is described as a prince of darkness and many other things, including Lu Lucifer. All right. And, and just to be clear, because a lot of people believe that Lucifer is the name of Satan. But it's not really a name. It's a description. OK. And when what happened in Hebrew, we did a terrible job translating it into the English language. All right. And so, but if, if you go back, um, it is a, a, a morning star or um, a shining star, a bright star, okay? Um, that is the description of Lucifer. So a bright star, you can say a morning star, just to, and, and a lot of people didn't know how to translate it, so they, 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 they did a terrible job translating, okay? So it's not actually a name, all right? Because I know a lot of people will, will say, well, Lucifer is a different demon than Satan. And that's not true. All right. Uh, Lucifer is a description. All right. And so uh, of, a, of a bright star, a morning star, a shining star, you know, um, it is a description of, uh, uh, of, of that. And so. So that's what it is. All right. Um, so Satan was a high ranking, ranking angel in God's kingdom, but he became evil. All right. He was full of greed and wanted to be. He didn't want to worship God. He wanted to be God. OK. And so the Bible says that there was a fight in heaven and the archangel Michael overthrew Satan and Satan was cast out of heaven. All right. And so. But Satan being so evil, all right, very conniving, very convincing, uh, Satan uh, convinced one third of the angels in heaven to to um, war against God and to follow him. OK, and uh, so I'm going to give you scripture. All right. Here's what what this says. Revelation 12, 7 
Revelation chapter 12, verse 7 through 9. And it says this, Then a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon and his angels fought back, but he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil, or Satan, who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. So, Revelation, and, and one of these days we're going we're gonna to have to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to teach on Revelations, but Revelations is at the end of the Bible, okay? But just because it's at the end of the Bible doesn't mean that that's what happened at the end of life. Okay, Revelation is like one of those cool movies that flashes back and forth. You know, they do like flashbacks to back then and then back to now. That's, that's how you got to think of Revelation. Okay, some things that hasn't happened yet and some things that already happened. So this already happened. Okay, and uh, I'll, I'll prove it to you guys because when the disciples were... Um, when they came to Jesus and they were excited that they go, uh, uh, even the demons uh, submit to us because of your authority, because of your name, okay? And Jesus uh, 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 told them, uh, he said this in Luke 10, verse 17, or verse 18, verse 17. Let's go with verse 17. Luke 10, verse 17, it says this. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the de demons submit to us in your name, right? In his authority. Uh, and then Jesus said, he replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So Jesus replied, hey, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. What he was describing was Revelation 12, verse 7 through 9, was the battle, okay? And so Jesus saw when the archangel overthrew him, and uh, the archangel Michael and threw him down to earth. All right. And so, and that's what Jesus is saying. And then he says this, Jesus said this in verse Luke 10, verse 19. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. So Jesus is saying, listen, don't rejoice that these demons have to listen to you, okay, that they, that they have to submit to you, but rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Rejoice that you are saved, that rejoice that you have a spot in heaven, okay? So what we must understand is that Satan and his demons are hard at work. They are hard at work today, all right? And they are hard at work because they know, Satan knows that he's running out of time, okay? He's running out of time, all right? There's going to be a time where the final battle takes place and Satan and all his demonic forces are going to be uh, uh, chained up in hell and, and forever and ever and ever. That's what the Bible says in Revelation, I believe, 20. In Revelation. And so he knows that that day is coming. That day of his judgment is coming. All right. And so he's hard at work. He's putting in a lot of work. And I'm going to tell you, he knows that he cannot win against God. All right. He knows that. And so the only way to hurt God is to destroy that which God loves the most, which is you and me, the human race. So he's hard at work. He cannot get to God. So the next best thing is the creation of God. The ones that God sent his son to die for. The ones that he loves so much that he sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for. That's you and that's me. So the devil knows that. He can't get to God. But what he can do is he can get to humans, right, to hurt God. 
So, now one thing that I gotta say, the devil is not all seeing. He's not all knowing. He can't be at all places at once. All right, so a lot of times we give him way too much credit than what he deserves, all right? A lot of times some, something bad happens and you're like, oh, that was the devil. And then uh, the next day, oh, that was the devil. Okay, you're giving him way too much credit. Some things just happen and some things are spiritual forces, all right? And so we know that, that the angel took one third uh, 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 I mean, you, we know that Satan took one third of the angels with them. Those angels now we call demons. Okay. Once Satan was an angel of light. Now he's a demonic force because he rebelled against God. He wanted to be God. He wanted to be higher than God. He didn't want to worship God. He wanted to be worshiped like God. And so, so we got to know this. God created all things for his good and purpose, but the devil tries to pervert everything for evil. Okay? The devil is not, Satan is not a creator. Listen to me. He cannot create things. All right? He can only pervert things. All right? So don't give him too much credit. Oh, he created this thing. Or he did No, no, no. He's a perverter, okay? He perverts everything that is good, everything that, that God tried to make for good, and God created everything for his purpose, and the devil is trying to pervert it. Just from the beginning, from Adam and Eve, right? God created this garden. God created humans and everything. And, 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 and the devil, the serpent, the dragon, okay? So he's called the dragon. He's called the serpent. He's called the father of lies, all right, he is a liar, he is a perverter, and he tries to twist things around for evil, all right? Music, a very beautiful thing. God created for his purpose and worship. The devil perverts it. And we see this, I ain't gotta tell you this. I mean, you see this a lot, right? You see it in, 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 in all kinds of videos, Girls shaking their booty and all kinds of stuff. I mean, very sexualized and all these things. Sex was created for a husband and a wife. It was a beautiful thing that God created. The devil has perverted it to what it is right now. Okay? And so, I mean, sex is, 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 is uh, advertised so much, you know, as this, these different things. And it's supposed to be a beautiful, great thing that God created. Not all these things that we see on TV or uh, advertisements and all these things. Right? So. So listen. Satan is jealous of you and me because Satan wanted to be God. And because we were created in the likeness in the image of God, and he was not. Hmm. Let me say that again. See, we were created in the image of God. Satan was not. He wants to be God. But see, and I'm not saying that we're gods. I'm saying we're the next best thing to God's image. Amen? Now, by all means, you are not a God. Trust me. All these people that say, oh, I'm a God. and this is... Listen, you're going to deal with God on the day of judgment. All right? And God said there, is, there shouldn't be no other gods except him. He is a jealous God. Okay? So. But listen, this is what I want to get to. Okay? Ephesians 6 verse 10 through 12, and it says this, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, against the tricks of the devil. Okay? Verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay? So what you must realize is that we're not fighting a physical war. It is a spiritual war that we're in right now all over the world. It is not a physical war. See, we're fighting against things that you cannot see with your physical eye. You must see it with your spiritual being, with your spiritual eye. And the Bible is telling you right there that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We're not fighting against flesh and blood, right? It's telling you that we're fighting against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This is not a physical war. It is a spiritual one. And let me just say this. Listen, if you are a Christian and you don't pray, okay, you're weak. Plain and simple. All right, you have no power. If you don't pray, you have no power. You're like a boxer that never trains. And when the actual fight comes, since you never trained, since you never listened to your coach, you have no power and you will lose. There's a lot of Christians out there. They don't pray. You got to pray. That is your training. So when the real obstacles come in your life, you know how to fight them off. You know that you're not fighting a physical fight, but you're fighting a spiritual fight. And if you're close to the father, which is your coach in a boxing ring, and you've been training, which is praying, reading your word and all that, then you will know how to deal with these things. We are not fighting against people. We are fighting against demonic forces that have infiltrated and possessed people in high places of power in this world. That's what we're fighting against. Places like the government, the White House, the media, the entertainment business, Hollywood, music industry, cartoons, the school systems, big corporations, the pharma companies, and yes, even the churches. Whoo! I know. But there is demonic forces at work even in the church. These demonic forces have infiltrated and possessed people all over the world, the high places, which means the people in authority, the people in power, people in the government. I mean, I don't have to tell you too much, man. You can see it, right? You can see it. And the people that, that, that can't see it, they are blinded. They are blinded. Even Christians today are blinded. They are blinded by who? They're blinded by the devil. They are blinded by Satan. Because they don't want to believe the truth. Okay? So I might get some heat for this because they're like, oh, he's, he's a conspiracy theorist now. No, I can give you all kinds of proof. I can show you all kinds of proof. Even that they are, are, are constantly... Constantly uh, deleting proof off the internet today. Why? Because the devil doesn't want you to see the truth. So the truth is getting harder to see all over the world today. 
Because whatever the media says, a lot of people believe it. And so you got to understand that, that, that the media will tell you all kinds of stuff. Okay? Watch this. In case, okay, 2 Corinthians. So watch this. What I'm saying is that you must be spiritually woken up. Okay? You have been blinded to the truth, but it's time you wake up and see the light. It's time, if you are a Christian, it's time that you wake up. It's time that you begin to realize the truth. It's time that you spiritually wake up. I'm not talking about physically. You wake up every day. I'm talking about spiritually. Wake up. Spiritually, wake up. See, because, and listen, I'm not saying that all these places that I just mentioned, the, the government, the media, uh, entertainment business, cartoons, all these things. I'm not saying that all these places are evil and to stay away from them. I'm not saying that. No. Just like there's evil working among them, there's also good forces working among them. Okay? So it's everywhere. There's good and evil. And there's a spiritual battle. It's a spiritual battle. Okay? It's going on. And so, watch this. 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4. It says this. In their case, the God of this world has blinded their minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of glory of Christ, who is the image of God. What did it say there? The God of this world. Who's the God of this world? Satan. Satan is the God of this world. Why? Why is he the God of this world? Simple as this. Satan is the God of this world because he represents all the evil that people seek after. Greed, corruption, lust, money, sex, power. When you worship these things, the Bible says that the God of this world has blinded your mind and it's keeping you from seeing the light. It's keeping you from seeing the truth. When you worship these things, you have made that your image of God. When you're seeking these things, you have made them your God. If you have made all these things your God, that means you're following the God of those things, which is Satan. He represents all those things. He's the one tempting you with all those things. He's the one bringing you all those things. But you have to understand that the devil perverts everything. He twisted things. He is the father of lies. So if he can get you scared and out of your mind and lying to you about certain things, then corruption will seek in. Fear will seek in. Evil will seek in. The art of war, listen, if you know how war happens, okay, people have written books about this. They've written books about war. Divide and conquer. The Bible says that the devil roams around the earth seeking like a lion, seeking who he may devour. It doesn't say that he's a lion. No. Jesus is a lion. He's the king of Judah. Jesus is. All right? But the Bible says that the devil's pretending to be a lion. Because if he can roar loud enough, maybe he can separate the sheep. And then he could devour them. That's his plan. To scare you, to divide and conquer. Right now we have a division amongst the church. We have a division amongst vaccine, non-vaccinated people. We have a division between politicians, politics. 
when some Christians are Republicans, some are Democrats, all these things. We have a division going on in the church that's dividing us. And if he can divide us, he can conquer us. Come on, guys. We got to get together. We got to get together. You have to understand. You have to spiritually see the lies of the devil. Wake up, people. Wake up. Because there's a lot of hate going on. On what you believe. The Bible says that the truth will set you free. Forget what they're telling you in the media. Forget what these so-called experts, forget what these politicians are telling you. Forget all those things and start listening to Jesus Christ your savior, your Lord. If you call him Lord and savior, that means you're gonna put your whole trust, your whole life upon his word, upon his hands, not anyone else's. Wake up, people. Wake up. Thank you, Jesus. Listen. That's all, I, that's all the time that I have for this week. But I'm going to continue it. So tune in, all right? Keep on tuning in. I hope you learned something today. I hope this has blessed you. I hope this has spiritually woken you up in some way or another. I know it has. I believe it has. Because the word says it will not come back void. I thank you, Jesus, for today. Thank you for waking us up uh, uh, today, Lord God. We thank you for those that are sick right now, Lord God. We want to pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for those that, that are coming attacked right uh, 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 from the devil right now, from, his, from the enemy, Lord God. We put the covering of, of the blood of Jesus upon their lives right now, Lord God. We thank you for their life, Lord God. We thank you that you are their protector, that you are their, their provider, that you are their savior, Lord God. That you make all things brand new, Lord God. That you are transforming them. That you are changing them. That you are rearranging them, Lord God. To be mighty warriors for you, Lord Jesus. Mighty men and women and children of God. That are being spiritually woken up right now. And all the attacks of the enemy, we rebuke it right now in the name of Jesus. We cover our people with the blood of Jesus, Lord God. Send your mighty angels to protect them, Lord God, to direct them, and to show them your light. We thank you for that, Lord God. We thank you that you're still producing miracles right now, that there is somebody uh, 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 getting out of the hospital bed right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody is being cured right now of cancer, right now in the name of Jesus. We claim victory upon our lives right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for everything that, that you're doing, Lord God. All the battles that you're fighting for us that we cannot see. We thank you right now that you have overcome everything that you have already won. We thank you in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Listen, guys, thank you for tuning in. Share this. Like I said, uh, go to the website, davidgomezministries.com. Tune in next week. God bless you. Until next week.